Hello there. Things that are different are not the same. Okay? <clears throat> I personally do not spend that much time online. Um, I usually spend a lot of time within the scriptures. And my wife and I out there uh, witnessing unto the lost, tracting, being used of the Lord as he would see fit. Okay? We do not have the time to sit and just engage in many things. And when we do, it, it is precious time. It is precious time spent. Okay? But remember this. Things that are different are not the same. Pastor. What is a pastor? Now, when you think of pastor, what do you think of? You think of a guy in a nice suit, tie, goes to a church building, right? Comes from a Jesuit uh, cemetery school, trained by Jesuits, yea hath God said. Pete Ruckman was referred to as a pastor. Even Brother Brian has been referred to as a pastor, okay? What is a pastor according to scripture, okay? Let's look at this. <clears throat> Get the authorized version of the scriptures and turn to the book of Jeremiah. <clears throat> Pastor appears nine times within the authorized version of the scriptures. Eight times, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight times in the book of Jeremiah. And once in the Pauline epistles. Okay? And it's very immediately noteworthy that the term pastor first appears in the book of Jeremiah, in Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 8. But what is interesting to note, that the word pastor only appears in the book of Jeremiah. What does that mean? Look at the book of Jeremiah in its context as in a whole. Okay? Look at it. Jeremiah the prophet was warning the children of Israel to repent and turn from their wickedness because Nebuchadnezzar was coming to wipe them out. <clears throat> and the children of Israel had reached a certain point where they were far gone. They were going to get God's judgment upon them no matter what because of what they had become at the point when Jeremiah was put into his prophetical ministry, you could say. Okay? Jeremiah was there. He was the warning voice towards the latter end of the, the children of Israel before they were taken into captivity by Nebuchadnezzar. Okay? That is very noteworthy to keep in mind as termed to the word pastor. Okay? You got to remember that. But go to Jeremiah chapter 2. <clears throat> Jeremiah chapter 2. We will read verses 5 onto verse 13 in Jeremiah chapter 2. Okay? <clears throat> Thus saith the Lord, What iniquity have your fathers found in me, that they are gone far from me, and have walked after vanity, and are become vain? Neither said they, Where is the Lord that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, that led us through the wilderness? through a land of deserts and of pits, 
through a land of drought and of the shadow of death, through a land that no man passeth through, and where no man dwelt. And I, who is this I? The Lord, okay? And I brought you into a plentiful country to eat the fruit thereof and the goodness thereof. But when ye entered, ye defiled my land and made mine heritage an abomination. Right here. The priests said not, Where is the Lord? And they that handled the law knew me not. The pastors also transgressed against me, and the prophets prophesied by Baal, and walked after things that do not profit. Now there's the first appearance of pastor. Okay, now look at the verse. And the priests said not. The priests. Okay, things that are different are not the same. Where is the Lord? And they that handled, they and they that handled the law knew me not, semicolon, the pastors also transgressed against me, and the prophets prophesied by Baal, and walked after things that do not profit. Okay? So the semicolon there, and they that handled the law knew me not. The pastors also transgressed against me, and the prophets prophesied by Baal, and walked after things that do not profit. Okay? <clears throat> okay? So, a pastor. The pastors, plural. And they that handled the law knew me not. Semicolon. The pastors also transgressed against me. And, comma. And the prophets prophesied by Baal. And walked after things that do not profit. So, what is a priest? The Levitical priesthood. Okay, we get that. Okay? They that handled the law knew me not, semicolon, continuing the train of thought in the sentence, the pastors also transgressed against me. Okay? That handled the law. Okay? Verse 9, Wherefore I will yet plead with you, saith the Lord, and with your children's children will I plead. For pass over the isles of Kittim, and see, and send unto Kedar, and consider diligently, and see if there be such a thing. Hath a nation changed their gods, which are yet no gods? But my people have changed their glory for that which doth not profit. Be astonished, O ye heavens, at this, and be horribly afraid. Be ye very desolate, saith the Lord. For my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters. And remember our Lord said, And out of his belly shall flow rivers of living waters. In John chapter 4, I just paraphrased that a little bit. Beg your pardon, okay. And hewed them out cisterns. Broken cisterns that can hold no water. What is a cistern? Something that holds water. Okay? Now, <clears throat> compare verse 13. Put your little finger there on verse 13 and look at verse 8. The priest said not, comma, where is the Lord? Oop, lost my place. And they that handled the law knew me not, semicolon. The pastors also transgressed against me. Comma, and the prophets prophesied by Baal, and walked after things that do not profit. Verse 13. For my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, and hewed them out cisterns, broken cisterns that can hold no water. Okay, look at that verse and hewed them out cisterns. They did it themselves. Okay? 
and compare that with verse 8. What do you see? What do you see? That's a rhetorical question that you are to answer yourself by looking at the scripture. Okay? Now, go to Jeremiah chapter 3. Jeremiah chapter 3. Verses 12 on to verse 16. Go and proclaim these words toward the north. And say, Return thou backsliding Israel, saith the Lord, and I will not cause mine anger to fall upon you. For I am merciful, saith the Lord, and I will not keep, keep anger forever. Only acknowledge thine iniquity, that thou hast transgressed against the Lord thy God, and hast scattered thy ways to the strangers under every green tree, and ye have not obeyed my voice, saith the Lord. Scattered there, what does that say there? Scatter thy ways to the strangers under every green tree. Scattered thy ways. Mingled themselves in places where they should not have been, maybe. Okay? And ye have not obeyed my voice, saith the Lord. Turn, O backsliding children, saith the Lord, for I am married unto you. And I will take you one of a city... And two of a family, and I will bring you to Zion. And right here. And I will, I will give you pastors according to mine heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. Knowledge, knowing the scriptures and understanding to, to, to depart from evil. Okay? You with me so far? And it shall come to pass, when ye be multiplied and increased in the land, in those days, saith the Lord, they shall say no more, the ark of the covenant of the Lord. Neither shall it come to mind, neither shall they remember it, neither shall they visit it, neither shall that be done any more. Verse 17. At that time they shall call Jerusalem the throne of the Lord, second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, okay? Where he is going to rule and reign for a thousand years, the millennial kingdom, okay? <clears throat> and all the nations shall be gathered unto it, to the name of the Lord, to Jerusalem. Neither shall they walk any more after the imagination of their evil heart, okay? Look at verse 15. And I will give you pastors according to mine heart, which shall feed you, feed you with knowledge and understanding. Okay? The very first mention of the word pastor in Jeremiah chapter 2 verse 8 has what? A very negative connotation to it. Does it not? Does it not? Okay? Look at it. Look, don't look at me. Go back to Jeremiah chapter 2. Look at verse 8. The priest said not, where is the Lord? And they that handled the law knew me not, semicolon, continuing the train of thought within the sentence. The pastors also transgressed against me, comma, and the prophets prophesied by Baal and walked after things that do not profit. Okay? Very first appearance is a negative connotation. But, in verse 15 in Jeremiah chapter 3, And I will give you pastors according to mine heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. Okay? Jeremiah chapter 10. <laughs> Jeremiah chapter 10. Jeremiah chapter 10. Verses 19 on to verse 22. Woe is me for my hurt. My wound is grievous. But I said, truly this is a grief, and I must bear it. My tabernacle is spoiled. Now, hold up. <clears throat> Look at verse 19. Woe is me for my hurt. My wound is grievous. But I said, truly this is a grief, 
and I must bear it. Who's saying that? Who's saying that? The Lord is. Think of how much he puts up with even you. You! Of the church of the living God. Think about that. Roll that around in your head a little bit. Okay? My tabernacle is spoiled. And all my cords are broken. My children are gone forth of me. And they are not. There is none to stretch forth my tent anymore. And to set up my curtains. For the pastors... <coughs> Beg your pardon, excuse me. For the pastors are become brutish and have not sought the Lord. And have not sought the Lord. Therefore they shall not prosper, and all their flocks shall be scattered. All their flocks shall be scattered. Okay? Behold, the noise of the brute is come, and a great commotion out of the north country, to make the cities of Judah desolate, and a den of dragons. Oh, den of dragons, um, similar to the red dragon, and no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. And it is no wonder that his ministers um, are ministers of righteousness. Not transformed. He is disguised as an angel of light. Hold on. Instead of paraphrasing that, beg your pardon. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 13 on to verse 15. For such are false apostles. What is an apostle? A sent one from the Lord, personally chosen by the Lord. You look at the apostles. Matthias was not personally chosen of the Lord. Okay? Paul was personally chosen of the Lord. Okay? To be an apostle according to Scripture. Okay? They had to see the Lord and to be appointed by Him. Okay? Okay? Every single one of the apostles saw the Lord with their own eyes and were personally appointed by Him. Okay? Keep that in mind. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore it is no great thing of his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. Okay? Go back to Jeremiah. <clears throat> uh, verse, uh, chapter 3, verse 21 again. For the pastors are become brutish, and have not sought the Lord. Therefore they shall not prosper, and all their flocks shall be scattered. Behold, the noise of the brute has come, and a great commotion out of the north country to make the cities of Judah desolate, and a den of dragons. Okay? What do we see so far about the word pastor? It's descriptive thus far, isn't it? Look at the scriptures. Let's continue. Go to Jeremiah chapter 12. <clears throat> Jeremiah chapter 12. <clears throat> Verses 7 on to verse 13. Jeremiah chapter 12. Verses 7 on to verse 13. I have forsaken mine house. I have left mine heritage. I have given the dearly beloved of my soul into the hand of her enemies. Talking about his people, the Jews. Who's saying this? The Lord. 
Mine heritage is unto me as a lion in the forest. It crieth out against me. Therefore have I hated it. Mine heritage is unto me as a speckled bird. The birds round about are against her. Come ye, assemble all the beasts of the field. Come to devour. Many pastors have destroyed my vineyard. They have trodden my portion, my portion underfoot. They have made my pleasant portion a desolate wilderness. They have made it desolate, and being desolate, it mourneth unto me. The whole land is made desolate, because no man layeth it to heart. The spoilers are come upon all high places through the wilderness. For the sword of the Lord shall devour from one end of the land even to the other end of the land. No flesh shall have peace. They have sown wheat, wheat but shall reap thorns. They have put themselves to pain, but shall not profit. And they shall be ashamed of your revenues because of the fierce anger of the Lord. Again, look at verse 10. Many pastors have destroyed my vineyard. Is that a title? Hmm? No. No. It's a description. Let's continue. Jeremiah chapter 17. Jeremiah chapter 17. <clears throat> Verses 15 on to verse 18. Behold, they say unto me, Where is the word of the Lord? Let it come now. As for me, I have not hastened from being a pastor to follow thee, semicolon, neither have I desired the woeful day. Thou knowest that which came out of my lips was right before thee. Now, this is Jeremiah speaking. This is Jeremiah speaking. Let's read that verse again. As for me, I have not hastened from being a pastor to follow thee. Neither have I desired the woeful day. Thou knowest that which came out of my lips was right before thee. So, with this, a pastor to follow thee. A description. Okay? And note, that which came out of my lips was right before thee. According to the scriptures, not your own head or your own heart, no, the scriptures. Be not a terror unto me, thou art my hope in the day of evil. Let them be confounded that persecute me, but let not me be confounded. Let them be dismayed, but let not me be dismayed. Bring upon them the day of evil. And destroy them with double destruction. Why is he saying that? Because here in verse 16, as for me, I have not hastened from being a pastor to follow thee. Okay? To follow thee. So a pastor is what? A description of what? Someone who follows the Lord. And who feeds thus far that we see. Okay. Now go to Jeremiah chapter 22. Jeremiah chapter 22. Jeremiah chapter 22. 
verses 20 on to verse 23. Go up to Lebanon and cry and lift up thy voice in Bashan and cry from the passages, for all thy lovers are destroyed. I spake unto thee in thy prosperity, but thou saidest, I will not hear. This hath been thy manner from thy youth, that thou obeyest not my voice. How many times have you been warned about something from the Lord and you are not obeying what he said to you? Hmm? The wind shall eat up all thy pastors. One, the cisterns that they have hewed out for themselves. Okay? The wind shall eat up all thy pastors, and thy lovers shall go into captivity. Surely then thou shalt be ashamed and confounded for all thy wickedness. O inhabitant of Lebanon, that makest thy nest in the cedars, how gracious shalt thou be when pangs come upon thee, the pain as of a woman in travail. Mm. Again, what is pastor there? The wind shall eat up thy pastors. That's a description. Isn't it? The wind shall eat up all thy pastors. And we're, we have already seen what a pastor is according to the scripture so far. But oh, 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 we ain't done yet, boy. We ain't done yet. Go to Jeremiah chapter 23. Jeremiah chapter 23, verses 1 on to verse 4. Woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, saith the Lord. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God of Israel, against the pastors that feed my people. So we are seeing associated with the, the description, pastor is one who what? Feeds. Kind of like a shepherd. Okay? Kind of like a shepherd, taking care of the flock, one who feeds, okay? Okay? <clears throat> Therefore thus saith the Lord God of Israel, against the pastors that feed my flock, ye have scattered my flock, and driven them away, and have not visited them. Behold, I will visit upon you the evil of your doings, saith the Lord. And I will gather the remnant of my flock out of all countries whither I have driven them, and will bring them again to their folds, and they shall be and they shall be fruitful and increase. Now check this out. Remember, things that are different are not the same. Okay? And I will set up shepherds over them, which shall feed them, and they shall fear no more nor be dismayed, neither shall they be lacking, saith the Lord. Okay? Okay? Do we get this thus far? Now, go to Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 1 on to verse 16. I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that ye walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called, with all lowliness and meekness and with long suffering. Forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the capital S spirit in the bond of peace. In the bond of peace. Are you making strife? Or are you seeking peace? 
There is one body and one capital S spirit. Even as ye are called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. Christ liveth in me. And the Lord is that spirit. But unto every one of us is grace given according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Wherefore he saith, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens, that he might fill all things. And he gave some, some apostles, noted first, things that are different are not the same. And some prophets, and some evangelists, and some pastors, and some teachers. Are these titles? Hmm? One will make an, uh, an argument about apostle. But these are descriptions of what these people do. Apostle, sent one. Sent by the Lord, saw the Lord, appointed by the Lord personally, personally, okay? You, you see these people out there calling themselves apostles, mostly the Charismatics and Pentecostals, okay? The Charismatics make a big, some of them do, make a big to-do about apostolic this, apostolic that. So do also the Catholics. Okay? Some prophets, mouthpieces of the Lord. Okay? Prophet is also is one that foretells the future events, but as Elijah and Elisha had said, before the Lord whom I stand. Okay? And one can prophesy today in this dispensation. By speaking the words of the Lord unto you through the Holy Ghost. And the Lord is that spirit. Okay? You listen to a video, you watch a video, and you get cut to the heart. What is that? The man behind that doing that? No. It's the spirit that is within speaking through the word of the Lord. Okay? Okay? And some evangelists... Get out there! Get out there! Okay? And some pastors, shepherds, oh. But things that are different are not the same, remember. Pastors feed. Okay? And teachers, teaching. Okay? X, Y, Z, that kind of stuff. All right? Let's continue. Now, why are all these here? Right here. Right here. Okay? Brethren, I think some of you are straining at a gnat. For the perfecting of the saints. For the work of the ministry for the edifying of the body of Christ. Every single one of these are uh, listed in verse 11. Verse 12 gives you what these are to be. Do you get it? Till we all come in the unity of the faith, and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, 
unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. That we henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro, and carried about with every wind of doctrine, by the slay, uh, slight, excuse me, by the slight of men, and cunning craftiness, whereby they, they lie in wait to deceive. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. Look at that verse. Excuse me. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him into in all things, which is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body, the whole body, the church of the living God, fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth, Every joint supplieth? Oh, he and he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and some teachers. Why? For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Okay? Verse 16 again. And remember, who is the head of the church? Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Okay? From whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. Verse 16 is shedding light on verses 11 and 12. Do you see that? Do you see that? Okay? Okay? Let's remember something. Go to Hebrews chapter 5. Go to Hebrews chapter 5. Hebrews chapter 5. This is something that we have to remember about this. Okay? <clears throat> Hebrews chapter 5, verses 1 on to verse 5. For every high priest taken from among men is ordained for men in things pertaining to God, specifically ma making mention of the priests. But let's learn something here, okay? For every high priest taken from among men is ordained for men, for men. Not of men, for men, in things pertaining to God, that he may offer both gifts and sacrifices for sins, who can have compassion on the ignorant, not knowing better, and on them that are out of the way, for that he himself also is compassed with infirmity. Hi! And by reason hereof he ought, as for the people, so also, also for himself, to offer for sins. Look at verse 4. And no man taketh this honor unto himself, but he that is called of God, as was Aaron. Let's read that verse again. And no man taketh this honor unto himself, but he that is called of God, as was Aaron. So also Christ glorified not himself to be made in high priest, but he that said unto him, Thou art my son, today have I begotten thee. Remember, God manifest in the flesh came to what? Serve and to give his life a ransom for many. Okay? And no man taketh this honor unto himself. Okay? Also now with that, go to Job. Go to Job chapter 32. Hmm. Job chapter 32. Oop, 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 oop. 
Job chapter 32. Job chapter 32, verses 21 on to verse 22. Good old Elihu here. Let me not, I pray you, accept any man's person. What is a person? Spirit, soul, and body. Okay. Neither let me give flattering titles unto men. Unto man, excuse me. For I know not to give flattering titles. In so doing, my maker would soon take me away. A pastor is a descriptive of what one is. It is not a title. It's a description, not a title. Okay? Do you understand? One who feeds, having compassion on the ignorant, that kind of thing, okay? It is a descriptive, not a title. You run into problems when men take upon themselves a title, okay? That's dangerous. Okay? Pastor is a descriptive, not a title. Okay? Okay? Do we get that so far? But now, what about rabbi? Rabbi. Go to Matthew. Things that are different are not the same. Brethren. Brethren. Y'all going to argue about this kind of stuff. Well, you got people out there who need to hear the truth. And you're going to argue about this kind of stuff. Okay? Matthew chapter 23. Matthew chapter 23. <clears throat> Verses 1 on to verse 12. Remember, doctrinally, this is the Old Testament. The king was offering the kingdom of heaven unto the Jews, the thousand-year reign of our Lord Jesus Christ from Jerusalem. Okay? We have to remember that. But look at this. Then spake Jesus to the multitude and his disciples, saying, The scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. All therefore whatsoever they bid you observe, that observe and do. Because they were teaching the law. They were speaking the truth of the law. But do not ye after their works, for they say, and do not. See, an infiltrator, a trained Jesuit, can come and take the authorized version of the scriptures and speak to you the scriptures, right? Because this is the word of God. This is the truth. The word of God speaks for itself. Hence, an infiltrator, someone who is not of us, can come along and speak out of the word of God because the word of God is truth, infallible, perfect, inerrant, okay? Yes, yes. But do not ye after their works, for they say and do not. See, our Lord right there was saying, yeah, they were teaching you the right, they were teaching you some of the right things, yes. But don't do like they do. For they bind heavy burdens and grievous to be borne, and lay them on men's shoulders but they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers. Kind of like the Catholics with the, uh, uh, what is that, confession. 
50 Hail Marys, do this, sweep the church building out, give to the Jesuit priests, wah, yada, 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 okay? But all their works they do, but all their works they do for to be seen of men, they make broad their phylactic trees and enlarge the borders of their garments and love the upper, mo upper rooms at feasts and the chief seats in the synagogues and greetings in the markets and to be called of men, rabbi, rabbi. Be, but be not ye called rabbi. For one is your master, even Christ, and all, uh, and all ye are brethren. Now, hold on. Things that are different are not the same. A pastor, as we have looked at, feeds. What does it say here? What does our Lord say right here? But be not ye called rabbi, for one is your master, even Christ, and all ye are brethren. And call no, and call no man your father upon earth, for one is your father, which is in heaven. Now, Note that it's a lowercase f there. Okay, don't look at me. Look and call no man your lowercase f father upon the earth. For one is your capital F father, which is in heaven. Okay? Now, this does not mean that your daddy, you can't call him father. Look at uh, Isaac and Abraham, okay? You can call your biological father your father. What is this talking about? A title. All you Catholic priests, father so-and-so, <laughs> okay? He's referring to a title. Beware of titles, okay? Okay? <clears throat> Neither be ye called masters, for one is your master, even Christ. But he that is greatest among you, don't look at me, look at that. What does that say? But he that is greatest among you shall be your servant. And whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased. And he that shall humble himself shall be exalted. When you start putting titles to men, okay, that could lead someone to be puffed up, okay? You don't give titles on the men. Don't do that. Look at the fruit of what happens. Look at the fruit of what happens when men start ascribing to themselves titles. I rest my case, see? Now, Go to the book of John. Go to the book of John. John chapter 1. Things that are different are not the same. Fulfilling the same end? Okay. For the edifying of the body of Christ. Okay. John chapter 1. John chapter 1. Verse 35 on to verse 42. Again the next day after John stood 
and two of his disciples. And looking upon Jesus as he walked, he saith, Behold, the Lamb of God. And the two disciples heard him speak, and they followed Jesus. They followed Jesus. Then Jesus turned and saw them following, and saith unto them, What seek ye? What seek ye? I, yes, I'm asking you, what seek ye? They said unto him, Rabbi, which is to say, being interpreted, Master, where dwellest thou? He saith unto them, Come and see. Come on, come and see. They came and saw where he dwelt and abode with him that day, for it was about the tenth hour. One of the two which heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Shimon Peter's brother. His first, he first findeth his own brother Shimon and saith unto him, We have found the Messiah, which is, being interpreted, the Christ. Uh, have you noticed so far that the scripture is interpreting itself quite plainly? Let's continue. And he brought him to Jesus. And when Jesus beheld him, he said, Thou art Shimon, the son of Jonah. Thou shalt be called Kephas, which is by interpretation a stone. <laughs> And upon this rock I shall build my church. Catholics. Catholics. Kephas, a stone. The rock that our Lord was referring to, dear Catholic, was of himself, not your Pope Peter. Okay? Get that through your head. Okay? <clears throat> now, Let's read verse 43 on to verse 51 to close out that chapter. The day following, Jesus would go forth into Galilee, and findeth Philip, and saith unto him, Follow me. Now Philip was of Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip findeth Nathanael, and saith unto him, We have found him, of whom Moses and the law and the prophets did write, Jesus of Nazareth the son of Joseph, so called. And Nathanael said unto him, Can there any good thing come out of Nazareth? Philip saith unto him, Come and see. Let our Lord say in verse 39, Come and see. See? Okay, are you getting this? Come and see. Come and see. Okay? <clears throat> Jesus saw Nathanael, coming to him, and saith of him, Behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom is no guile. Nathanael saith unto him, Whence knowest thou me? Jesus answered and said unto him, Before that Philip called thee, when thou wast under the fig tree, I saw thee. Nathanael answered and saith unto him, Rabbi, thou art the Son of God, thou art the King of Israel. Jesus answered and said unto him, Because I said unto thee, I saw thee under the fig tree, believest thou? Thou shalt see greater things than these. And he saith unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Hereafter ye shall see heaven open, and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the capital S, Son of Man. Okay? Now go to John chapter 3. <laughs> John chapter 3. <laughs> Verses 1 on to verse 10. Oh, uh, no. No, let's read verses 1 on to verse 13. 
There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews, a ruler of the Jews, rabbi, master, rabbi, pertaining unto the Jews. Okay? The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. A teacher come from God. Look who's saying that to him. Okay? Let's keep reading to get the full context. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. God be with him. He is God. Let's keep reading. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Kingdom of God right there. Spiritual. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Okay. He was looking at that in the literal sense. Not in the spiritual meaning the kingdom of God. Okay. Jesus answered, Verily, verily I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water, and of the capital S Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit, capital S, is, lowercase s, Spirit. He, right there, verse 6, explained to you what verse 5 means. Look at, look at the, don't, quit looking at me. Get your nose in the book. Jesus answered, Verily I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water, verse 6, That which is born of the flesh is flesh. And of the capital S spirit in verse 5, and that which is born of the Spirit, capital S, Spirit, is Spirit. He cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Verse 6, or verse 7. Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. For the wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the, li and thou hearest the sound thereof. But canst not tell whence it cometh, and whither it goeth. So is everyone that is born of the capital S Spirit. Meaning, having faith on the Lord Jesus Christ. Having faith on him. Okay, let's continue. Nicodemus answered and said unto him, How can, the, how can these things be? Pers very quickly, personally, I think Nicodemus made it. I really do. I really do. He couldn't see this because he wasn't seeing it within the kingdom of God, the spiritual. He was only looking with these two things. Okay? That's it. Do you get it? Let's continue. And look at how our Lord responds to him about that. And Je Jesus answered and said unto him, Art thou a master in Israel? Oh, excuse me. Art thou a master of Israel? And knowest not these things? Rabbi, being interpreted, master. But our Lord did not refer to him as rabbi. He referred to him as master. And we just saw rabbi being interpreted master. See, the whole thing of the master, the rabbi, was within the dispensation of the law. God permanently indwelling the saved believer was not there. Okay? Eternal security was not there. 
within the Old Testament. Okay? So, the Jews had their masters, rabbi. Okay? But as we already looked at in Jeremiah, pastors, ones who fed, okay? There's a difference there. There's a big difference. A big, big difference. Okay? All right? Please understand that. You can't blend them all together as meaning the same thing. Unto the end of, for the edifying of the body of Christ, yes. But we all don't have the same calling, dear brethren. Do you get it? Okay? Do you get it? <laughs> Verse 10 again. Jesus answered and said unto him, Art thou a master of Israel, and knowest not these things? Verily, verily, I say unto thee, We speak that we do know, and testify that we have seen, and ye receive not our witness. If I have told you earthly things, and ye believe not, how shall ye believe if I tell you of heavenly things? And no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man, which is in heaven. Which Paul echoes in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11. And <clears throat> let's see another one, another appearance of the word rabbi. Verse 23 on to verse 27. And John also was baptizing in Aen, A Aenon, excuse me, near to Salim, because there was much water there, and they came and were baptized, for John was not yet cast into prison. Then there came, then there arose a question between some of John's disciples and the Jews about purifying. And they came unto John and said unto him, Rabbi, he that was with thee beyond Jordan, to whom thou bearest witness, behold, the same baptizeth, and all men come to him. John answered and said, Are you looking at that verse, verse 27? John answered and said, A man can receive nothing except it be given from him, given him from heaven. No man taketh this honor upon himself, but those who are called, as Aaron was, called, given to them of heaven. Do you get it? Okay? And now go to John chapter 6. John chapter 6. <clears throat> John chapter 6. Hmm. <laughs> Let's read verses 22. Oh. On to verse 27. The day following when the people which stood on the other side of the sea saw that there was none other boat there, save the one wherein two his disciples were entered, and that Jesus went not with his disciples into the boat, but that his disciples were gone away, alone. Howbeit there came other boats from Tiberias nigh unto the place where they did eat bread, after that the Lord had given thanks. When the people therefore saw that Jesus was not there, neither his disciples, they also took shipping and came to Capernaum, seeking for Jesus." And when they had found him on the, on the other side of the sea, they said unto him, Rabbi, when camest thou hither? Jesus answered them and said, Verily, verily I say unto you, ye seek me not because ye saw the miracles, but because ye did eat of the loaves and were filled. 
Let that verse roll around in your head for a little bit. Why do some of you seek the Lord Jesus Christ? See, just because for your own personal benefit? And amen, yes, our Lord's grace is a benefit that thanks be to God for his unspeakable gift, his grace, his mercy, his forgiveness, which he gives on to you when you come to him on his terms. But see, what did he say here? Verily, verily, I say unto you, ye seek me, not because ye saw the miracles, and the miracles were there signs unto the Jews to prove to the Jews who Jesus Christ is. God the Father. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. God was manifest in the flesh. But because ye did eat the loaves and were filled. See, they were thinking of the natural, not the spiritual. Verse 27. Labor not for the meat which perisheth, but for that meat which endureth unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you. For him hath God the Father sealed. And God the Father is the soul of the Godhead. Okay? Listen, brethren. Pastor is not a title. It's a descriptive. Okay? The Lord said the pastors, referring unto them. Okay? Pastor is not a title. Okay? Being a pastor is what someone does. Feeding the flock. Okay? When you got the hirelings in the buildings trying to attain onto a piece of paper that says, man says I'm able to do this, uh, attributing to themselves from man the title of pastor, whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay? Being a pastor is a description, not a title. And to blend everything into such is not wise, because things that are different are not the same. Okay? Do we understand this? Okay? You can refer to someone as being a pastor, meaning feeding the flock, okay? But you start attributing to someone the title of pastor, using pastor as a descriptive, okay? Person, place, a thing, okay? Okay, person, place, a thing, describing, okay? When you start putting onto a man a title, that's dangerous. And you have one master. Amen. Even Christ. Don't confuse these things. Because remember, remember, those who are of the church of the living God, who have been called to whatever capacity the Lord has called them on to, we have one end. The glorification of our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, go back to Ephesians chapter 4. Okay, go back to Ephesians chapter 4. Okay, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11 and 12 and 13. And he gave, he gave, and we saw in Jeremiah that Jeremiah, I didn't uh, cease to hasten from being a pastor unto thee. Okay? He sought the Lord. Okay? Being a pastor unto thee. One who feeds. One who feeds. Okay? 
And he gave some apostles, and some prophets, and some evangelists. Philip the evangelist went out there evangelizing. Some pastors, and some teachers. These are all different. But for the perfecting of the saints. Do you see that? For the work of the ministry. For the edifying of the body of Christ. Okay? Okay? Now some will argue that pastor is only in the Old Testament. Paul brings it up here. The only time it appears within the New Testament in the Pauline epistles. But it's a description. Because what are these right here in verse 11? 11, what are they there to do? Look at verse 12, people. It's not that difficult. Okay? To refer to someone as the title of pastor. No. Don't do that. As describing what they have been called to do of the Lord. That's different. Okay? Okay? Someone could be a teacher, but yet not feeding the flock. Okay? Someone can point out X, Y, Z, but not be feeding the flock. Okay? Do you get the difference? Okay? Please do not be confused on this. Brethren, there are other things we need to worry about. Worry about what's going on out there. Well, don't worry about it, but... And being used of the Lord to do what He has called you onto. Okay? Okay? Pastor describes what one does. Never to be taken upon oneself as a title and never to be given onto someone as a title. Do you understand? Because as we saw in Jeremiah, what happened when people hewed out their own cisterns that couldn't hold water? We saw the Pharisees. They loved to be called rabbi. Okay? Okay? You're an evangelist. You're going out there and witnessing and tracting, that kind of stuff. Okay? You're a teacher, teaching them X, Y, Z. Okay? An apostle. An apostle. The 12 apostles. Okay? Every, every single one of them. Of the scriptural apostles. Okay? Every single one of them saw the Lord with their two eyes and were personally appointed by the Lord Jesus Christ personally. Okay? Okay? And there were, okay, saw him with their own eyes and personally appointed. Paul personally saw the Lord with his own eyes and was personally appointed by the Lord. Matthias wasn't. Okay? People, men, were ascribed the title of apostle. But according to the scripture, a true apostle, there are two requirements. They had to see the Lord with their own eyes and be personally appointed to, uh, by the Lord to be that. And if anyone out there today is calling themselves an apostle, that is something that they are taken from among men, ascribing it to themselves, because I'll tell you what, buddy, they, not, they have not seen the Lord Jesus Christ personally and been appointed from him, uh, been appointed by him to do that. No, no. And there are still rabbis today. There are still rabbis today. They're Jews. But see, but see the thing about the master again, okay? Again, the thing about master was under the dispensation of the law, God dwelling within you permanently 
was not there. The spirit of truth will guide you into all truth. Okay? The permanent resident, the seal of the Holy Ghost, the circumcision made without hands, was not there. That's the thing about the masters. Okay? Okay? It's a description. Never to be ascribed unto as a title or never to be taken as a title. You understand? Okay? So, that's going to be it for this video. This was very impromptu, but um, put this to bed. There are other things, people, that you need to worry about and be concerned with. Okay?